Hi, today we're going to take a look at the first of several Thunderbolt 3 storage devices. This is the G-RAID from G-Technology, and we're going to take a look at what it can do. So let's start. Today we're going to take a look at the first of a number of Thunderbolt 3 drives here on Lensvid. If you're not familiar with Thunderbolt 3, it is a real game-changing connector and data transfer protocol developed by Intel here in Israel. In 2015, I had a chance to interview the head of a team which developed this technology in Intel. You can see part of this interview on the screen right now. Thunderbolt 3 brings ultra-high data transfer speeds up to 40 gigabit per second or 5 gigabytes per second, which is four times as fast as USB 3.1, as well as a whole host of other capabilities and supported protocols. Unlike Thunderbolt 2, the new Thunderbolt 3 uses the same physical connector as the USB Type-C. What is important to understand though is that although every Thunderbolt 3 can be used as a USB Type-C connector, the opposite is in the case and regular USB-C connectors do not support the fast transfer speeds of Thunderbolt 3 nor many of its other features. After we have just praised the technology, I do want to share with you our personal experience with Thunderbolt 3. This is not particular to the GTEC drive and true to other Thunderbolt 3 devices that we have used. First, I want to say that our experience is based on two Windows 10 based desktops. On UPC laptops which come pre-installed from the factory, this might not happen and from our understanding, Macs still have much better Thunderbolt 3 support out of the box than Windows machines. The only way to describe our experience in trying to get Thunderbolt 3 to work on both of our computers was horrific. On our secondary machine, which has Thunderbolt 3 on the motherboard, we had to install drivers, play with the BIOS, change settings in Windows, and finally, after hours of reading forums and tweaking, we finally got to hear the Windows device connected sound, and then we still had to authorize the Thunderbolt device. A completely redundant extra step in our opinion. Seriously, have you ever authorized the USB hard drive. With our main machine, which is based on an ASUS X99 motherboard and requires an add-on card to connect Thunderbolt 3, our experience was actually much worse, and despite countless hours and hardware and software changes as well as form tips and even emails to ASUS, we're still unable to make this card work. Bottom line, if you have a Windows PC which did not come pre-configured to handle Thunderbolt 3 out of the box, be prepared for some potential deep troubleshooting. We really wanted this to be more of a plug-and-play experience just like USB, but this isn't the case from our experience. Quick update, after we finished this review, we had a talk with Intel again and they told us that Apple actually has better compatibility out of the box because of the work that they have done on the operating system and that Microsoft has been hard at work, and still is, to improve Windows Thunderbolt 3 compatibility and we shall see improvements coming as part of upcoming Windows 10 updates. Anyway, this is enough of us bitching about Thunderbolt 3 on Windows, now let's take a closer look at the GTEC 16TB Thunderbolt 3 drive. The G-RAID drive, as it is called, is extremely well built with a full metal enclosure and it feels very nice. There is really nothing on the front aside from the big G which has a LED inside to let you know what the drive is doing and when it is powered on. The only other thing on the front is the door to the drive. Our unit came with two enterprise class Hitachi HGST 8TB drives which on their own cost over $700 if you buy them off the shelf. G Technology has similar unit pre-configured with up to 24 terabytes and you can replace the drives yourself easily if you want. The back of the unit is where all the action happens. You have a large power button. We still prefer a switch, but at least this one is large enough so you don't have to look too much. A power cable connector. It comes with a pretty large power brick, a USB 3.1 type C connector, HDMI out, and two Thunderbolt 3 connectors so you can connect another Thunderbolt 3 device. We tried it and it worked well. Also on the back is a Kensington security slot if you want to lock the drive and a grill for the internal 40mm fan which sadly you can't control. More on noise later. The unit isn't huge. It measures over 25 centimeters, 10 inches, over 12 and a half centimeters, 5 inches with a height of 8.5 centimeters, 3 inches, but it is fairly heavy with the drives and all the metal weighing over 2.8 kilograms or 6.3 pounds. 
The unit came with two cables, a relatively long Thunderbolt 3 20 gigabit per second cable and a USB 3.1 Type-C to Type-A cable. We like the long Thunderbolt 3 cable, but we really wish it was the faster 40 gigabit per second cable, although these cables can be very expensive. It did not affect our drive in any way as it doesn't even get close to saturating it, but if you start connecting other things to the drives, other drives, monitors, etc., this might become an issue, so keep this in mind. Now let's look at performance. There are three main things to test when it comes to a drive like this. Transfer speeds, noise, and reliability. One note before we start, the drive did come pre-formatted for Mac. If you're using a PC like we do, you will need to use the G-Technology Format Wizard software. We will start with transfer speeds. We tested the drive in RAID 0, where 14.5 terabytes are available for the user, and in RAID 1, when 7.45 terabytes are available for the user. We tested the drive using Crystal Disk Mark version 6, and we also did a real-world test moving files to and from the drive to a computer, which used the Samsung 1800 SSD. We tested speeds using Crystal Disk Mark on both Thunderbolt 3 and using USB 3, and just for comparison, and we also use USB 3.1. Here are the results. As you can see, the drive performed pretty well with RAID 0 with 385 megabytes per second read and 381 megabytes per second write with about half the speed in RAID 1, as you would expect. Using USB 3 or 3.1 brought the speed significantly lower and if you're considering connecting this drive using anything but Thunderbolt 3, we would suggest that you look for a different, less expensive option. Real-world results for transferring 3.6 GB of data, 15 video files, were kind of strange. It took 19 seconds to transfer the files from the drive to the computer, but only 12 seconds to write them to the drive, or around 190 megabytes per second to the computer, but about 300 megabytes per second to the drive. We suspect that our system had some bottleneck with the SSD or possibly somewhere else, and we will try to redo this test with a different system and update our article later on. As for reliability, it is way too early for us to tell with only two months of use and we might do a follow-up in a year's time if people will be interested. What we can say is that at the Backblaze 2017 Quarter 3 Data Stats report out of 45 8TB HGST drives similar to the one used of the G-Rate for over six months there have been zero fails. That is nice to hear, but in all honesty, this is too little time and too small of a sample rate to make any real statistical observations. When it comes to noise level, there are a few things to keep in mind. The first is the fan in the back and the spinning and sick noises of the drives themselves. In our noise test, the ambient noise was usually under 30 decibels and the drive from about 50 centimeters or 20 inches registered a jump to about 35 decibels. This might not sound like much, but from time to time it does get louder with clear sick noises and in general we would say that this is the biggest downside of an otherwise well-performing unit. Now let's conclude this review. So what do you think about the G-RAID 16TB Thunderbolt 3 drive? Well, as one of the first large capacity Thunderbolt 3 drives on the market, this unit is very well built, has plenty of connectivity, easy to replace enterprise level drives, and a nice transfer speed for a two spinning drive solution, particularly in RAID 0. On the downside, at $950, this isn't an inexpensive solution and you can get the same capacity out of the Western Digital Duo desktop RAID for under $600, although certainly not with the same speed, drive quality and extra functionality. For us, the biggest issue with this drive, as we have mentioned, is noise. If you have a way to hide this drive relatively far away under the desk, for example, this might be okay. But if you must put it on your desk and you also do some recording, for example, this can be distracting. We really hope to see more soundproofing and less audible drives in the future. So that was our look at the G-Technology G-RAID 16TB Thunderbolt 3 unit. You can read the full review with all the test results on lensvid.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you on the next video.